so I figured, uh... What the hell? Oh, thank you, Dr. Emmett Brown. That was on point. Um... You might notice I'm in a different place. This is, uh, part eight of Gwydion Reacts to Gwydion. Some frogs have joined us, uh, some crickets perhaps. Oh, by the way, if your answer to the question, what the hell was uh, mosquitoes, you might be on to something. But nonetheless, we're doing this. Speaking of which... So these are uh, September of, uh, I think these are like, well, a lot of the footage is from my birthday. That would have been my 29th birthday. I'm 43 now, I'm turning 44 this year, so you can do the math. It was 15 years ago. I'll do the math for you. Uh, one limitation, there's a church here, or like a chapel. Anyway, um... Can you hear the ocean? Uh, I don't have headphones, so hopefully it'll be alright. Shall I start? This first one is different from what I thought it was going to be. It's called JDR 1968. JDR stands for John Dan Reed. That's my dad. But I was thinking this was going to be that, like, four-minute... Uh, like compilation of his like it's I took his 90 minute interview and cut it down to 4 minutes with like footage behind it but this one is something else it's his poetry I think from 1968 but that's a guess actually um, I think it's from the 60s and uh, if I recall correctly this is two pieces part of Part of a, a piece called The Voice of the Hero Angel, and part of a piece called The Sea. In no particular order, or in or in a particular order. Again, if I recall correctly, I think I I think it ends where it begins. And there's various footage in the background, some of which will probably Swiss cheese out, but you know, I'll leave I'll leave enough of it in. Let's get started, shall we? Okay, false alarm. Now we're ready. Steady palm trees witness the Amagon summer waves and the ocean is afraid. The night comes and with it lightning that strikes as a torrent of injured pride and memory. The oceans roar and grass on the sea cliffs sways as a myriad of soundless tiny phantoms yet to be born. And life itself is a reed, we know it not nor are we afraid. For all things shall pass us to see the summer wind, the winter rain, the autumn and the wind. But dawn reaches the sand as an incoming tide To kiss it yellow and the waves ripple lightly for a change We venture out I am such as these Inheritors of the space fields Forager of the meteors and the stars I wake beyond the spirit and the flesh I am born, born into and through and out of man I have been here before and many times will be again I have marked through armies, towered over city walls And fed and vulture beast I have been master, king and slave Warrior and peacemaker, fallen friend of the best of men in all their hopes and illusions. I have come to this world as I have come to other worlds, other same times. I have come to live and work, to love and ascend and pass by. The current of space is vast as a great transcendent spiral world of the mighty beyond, corporal vision, lightning beyond dogma, closing and protecting beyond circumstances of ceremony divorced from meaning. Behold, the world of men is full of ceremonies and their life. 
like the eggs of the tarantula in the ancient web from which the young have long since hatched and left to scourge the earth, and the eggs shift back and forth in the desert wind and have no essence, either cause to which they lead, and lost is the world of men. These ceremonies have in the fruits of their nonsense reached vulgarity and have become the harbors of hypocrisy, and diverse forms of pompous fraud will stagnation, and these wondrous rituals have even gone so far as to hypnotize men, and have, being neutrals, been taken up by the forces of Andromanius, and so it has become that men in long, dark robes shout rituals that they can they flare forth as male goats in heat from their demigod mountaintops, where men have put them in search to revere something tangible, for the wisdom of the infinite God has left their ceremonies. God does not bother himself to value the presuppositions of men. Pausing for a second, I remember I showed this to a friend of mine. I, I had, I made a DVD of like, oh, 50 of these short videos. I was actually inspired by David Lynch when he came out with, uh, The Inland Empire. Because he was out making these internet shorts. And, uh, people were calling us up at Screen Actors Guild saying, Hey, aren't I supposed to fly first class to Poland? And we're like, who are you and what are you talking about? And they're like, well, David Lynch is flying. And we're like, yeah, he hasn't told us anything. And uh, so we contacted David Lynch's people. I'm not sure how much of this I should be sharing, but at this point it's kind of history, so I think it's okay. Um, and uh, they said, yeah, well, it's an Internet series. It's just, you know, little videos for the Internet. And we're like, yeah, we have a contract for that. If you want, you know, professional actors, you have to let us know what you're doing and fill out contracts. And they were like, okay. And uh, and I remember one guy called and he's like, but it's David Lynch. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Have you seen Mulholland Drive? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, do you think that David Lynch gives a shit about the machinery of Hollywood? And he's like, oh yeah, good point. Anyway, so then then he, he edited it all together and made it a feature film and up on the silver screen. And so we had to retroactively tap tartly a bunch of people. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, long story short, I decided to take um, several of my videos I had shot up to that point and put them all, string them together into a feature film, sort of. And anyway, uh, so I had that playing up on the TV screen at a friend of mine's house, who was, um, I mean, I mention it because it's kind of important for the for the mental picture. She, she was African-American and very Christian, which is kind of different than, you know, other uh, demographics. So she she heard this, and she got really mad. It kind of um, ended our friendship. <laughs> because, uh, you know, she took this as, as that, it, that I was ra- raging against, that I was, I was, you know, raging, you know, spouting words that were the opposite uh, in some way, I guess, of what, what was being said at the Agape Church in... Uh, L.A., Los Angeles, is what it is. But remains infinite in its relationship to the real man, above and through and beyond the dream. Those who are about to know, about to see this, wherever they may be, will find life a smoke world from which the truth wind rescues them into vision. They will walk through life, walking and peeling and walking forward on the many levels of cosmic vibration. And there are other things than ritual that chain men into the sweet web. In all, there are four syndromes of which ritual for its own sake is the first. The second is what I shall call power feed. Power feed is the monster blood that makes strange abstractions come to life. The clockwise swastika, the building up of great powers and armies, not to capitalize upon the greatness of men, but to make use of their madness. Power feed. I think that, uh, I mean... The clockwise swastika reference, of course, is talking about the Nazis. However, there's been a popular myth in uh, among you know scholarly nerds in the West that uh, that the swastika spinning one way is a sacred symbol from India or Buddhism or China or something, right? And that the uh, when it spins the other way, that's the Nazi symbol. However, however. Here in India, uh, and in many places, 
in the East, as people used to call it a hundred years ago, and people still do, I guess, out of laziness. They spend both ways. They spend both ways. Um, but yeah, I think that that reference that he's making is operating from the assumption that the clockwise one is the Nazi one, if that makes sense. In the somewhere rainforest, poison in the fire flower, the war looked around the bush flame dancing, the great false god computer that rules men's lives. In the dragon cavern of comfort values, look for this in the world. A great cat playing with two mice at once. The tickling violence that angers crickets to death lock before the eyes of the watch god chance. The great corporate kingdom, the high man who feeds on the restriction of others, devouring whole economies, vortexing just to be clear, <clears throat> um, this was nine years before the Nazis had their uh, return to the scene in present-day culture. They were sort of relegated to a joke um, prior to that. And uh, so we were doing artsy-fartsy shit. Um, my friends and I. And, uh, so it wasn't with any kind of spirit of, uh, actually believing in any of the bullshit white supremacy that my blonde friend, uh, made that salute. Uh, we were drunk at the time, no doubt. Um, and I used it in this particular context, in this particular portion of this particular poetic rambling, because it fit. Uh, he was specifically talking about power feed. He was specifically talking about that swastika. And, uh, I mean, I feel like I need to, like, do a little footnote disclaimer here that, you know... No, 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 no Nazi, you know, like people used to say no homo back in the day. Problematic, right? I've mentioned before that a lot of my uh, work from back then was a little problematic. But, I don't know. Anyway, just that. Ways of life to the glory of the ant world. And the people are lost in sleep from their real selves. They have been drawn through belief in hypocritical and devious means of life to nestle in devotion to the lost. Therefore, they and all their works seem as dead transistors under the testing force of those who know and follow truth and are close to the walking within them. Behold, the gathering together of the dream righteous in temples is unseemly in such men's eyes, like unto the termites that gnaw at the very chapel wood. And they and all their works are to those who see with the inner eye all trite. For that which is trite is that which is devoid of the essence which makes men able to relive and regain in its truth. Those who see with the inner eye are as other men who have as insects from the cocoon of illusion hatched earlier than their fellows in the season of reaping. Such as these are not like unto windling creatures. They are essential men who must guide and help their younger fledgling brethren wake them from the dream web. To such as these are assigned great and diverse tasks in the arts of communication, that the God voice may be heard above and beyond and in spite of the dream. Behold, the river of life is so recognition flows through the nowness of this time drift as if it were a deep subterranean cavern going down and down and down and the stalagmites and the stalactites crystal glow mirror bright from and through the water's surface with multitudes of reflection great wondrous and diverse are life's now beauties each telling its truthful tale but the river flows swiftly swiftly downward downward to the land that to be known must be experienced and before it comes the volcano the veins of the earth. So to live these days meaningfully, it is required that those who know essence must strive to learn more than this, must strive to perceive essence in everything, that the fleeting moments may not escape in the kingdom of the frivolous. You who are awakening must be brave, must wander free in spite of the burdens over the earth, 
must know what each spirit man is feeling, must taste the flower of each dawn and dark and morning. The infinite God is not a God of grief and pain. He will not be reached in echoing the heresies of the dream righteous. God will not be sated with the sacrifices of the morrow for the redemption from the yesterday. Neither will he be serviced by the praise of the admin, nor the subscriptions of the rich, nor the neon glow of the sandwich sign. God will not be made to rejoice by man's admissions of unworthiness, nor his resolves to be worthy, for how can unworthiness strive toward being that which it is not? God is not in these things. God is beyond the reflection in life's cavern river, for the tales they tell of him. God is beyond the church sleep. This was the part, as you might imagine, that uh, upset my Christian friend back in the day. God is of purer essence than to be held in ritual for its own sake, and far greater is he than power will be. Beware of those who cry in the graveyard, even as they plot to devour the kindred and watch for the noonday owl and the day of the angry sun. Beware the sky fire and the valley of the dark swamp, but even in this, look beyond the twilight things, and the sea is gone. The sky is bright, the sun is set here, the sand. to regret the time passing of the waves and gone are the clouds from the night-born sky on some forgotten day they will remember us they will remember us and say that we too are here and the wind is silent but blood soon dies and winds never fail for long so that memories congeal only so long as there is the sea and we will wander down the sand down the sand emptiness is a high falcon that drops on phantom wings to know the taste of hunger, to know the taste of hunger and regret, as we wander so as to say that the sands may never know our tread, for now, alas, perhaps we're dead. The sea is gone, red are the archangels that have the wings of bats, and the sea is gone, white clouds, white clouds in the sky, and you and I and the sea, the sea is gone. I was, uh, in my mind, correcting a typo. But there's more than one version of this poem, and they all say... White clouds in the sky are you and I, not and, are. On blood is a valley, a valley so red where rest the dead, and vultures, vultures, hungry vultures have forgotten how to feast, for the sea is gone. And this is the valley of falcons, in the day that none shall remember, in the world, in the universe, in the sky that never was, and the sea is gone. such as these, inheritors of the space fields, forager of the meteors and the stars. I wake beyond the spirit and the flesh. I am born, born into and through and out of man. I have been here before and many times will be again. I have walked through armies, towered over city walls, and fed the vulture feast. I have been master king of Fallen through to the best of men and all their hopes and delusions. <sighs> yeah, I want to publish my dad's poetry one of these days. Some of it uh, didn't age well, unfortunately. He mentioned that there were four syndromes. Um, the first, I think, was, uh, you know, well, one of them was power feed. One was ritual for its own sake. One is the fire witch, which he sees as like people worshipping the Virgin Mary or Isis or any goddess and that they're all this evil Lilith character. He mentions Kali. I disagree with him on that. And then the fourth syndrome I believe he calls uh, passion theft, which is being gay. So that's unfortunate because the rest of the poem is good. Uh, 
All right. <clears throat> this next one is called Circular. It stars my buddy Chris and I. And I believe there was drinking involved. Let's hit it. Yeah, like I said, drinking involved. You remember about William Poker? Jesus. You don't? What do you have? You have something in his belt. Mm. Silver gun. Let's see? Yeah, wasn't it a silver gun? You ever go in a shot? Creatures Chris and I created on the astral the 90s. Oh, is this going to get blocked? I mean, the sound might be clunky because some no, no, of the YouTube is hard to find. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, see anything that means I haven't put her interview up. Yeah, it was just a random day. They both showed up on the same day, and I was, like, obsessed with making these silly YouTube videos, and so... That was the result. Some of the footage was from uh, down by uh, Nuestra Señora Regina de Los Angeles, the old Spanish mission that the city's named after. And it was called Circular. Yeah, yeah, I was drinking a lot back then. I haven't had a sip of alcohol in like a year. But back in 2007, oh boy. Different times, different Edward. Okay, this is our last one for today. This is, uh, I don't know what it's called. Oh, it's called Of a Pizza. Well, let's see, let's see what happens. I remember when I was little and I would contemplate suicide. Well, Leon, you know, I mean, it's very, uh, it's almost existential. And then I realized that it'd be better to just leave in the middle of the night. sit under the tree. become the world's first paintball artist and I did another one of a pizza. Oh right. 
that video was called Bubba Pizza. Well, there you go. Um, if you notice the ECR, that means that during that time, Edward had taken over. It was no longer Gwydion videos. Um, I think at that time, the the agreement between Edward and Gwydion was that Gwydion would do the art walk videos and Edward would do everything else. That's how it was at that time. Well, all right. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you're an old friend of mine checking in to see these videos you haven't seen in a long time, hello. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, anything else? No. I think I'll order some food now. It's probably about that time. Eight twenty. Haven't eaten since one. Uh, this isn't interesting to you, is it? Um, yeah. Well, that was that. And, uh, I guess until next time. If you're interested in seeing more of me standing here in this exact spot, talking into a microphone in this exact spot, check out this video. And, uh, also, check out this video. There has to be like, I don't know, 17 seconds or something in between those, those links. That's what that was about. Okay. Until next time. Uh, how does the... <coughs> I don't remember... The Three Amigos thing. This. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Peace.